Yeah, I guess it's been a long time since I made one of these. So this time, I'm gonna make it up to you guys and talk about a highly requested prehistoric creature, Dimetrodon. And today, we will go into great detail about this amazing animal and its history. So let's just start out right away. Dimetrodon was a mammal-like reptile that lived on Earth during the early Permian, 295 to 272 million years ago, meaning they existed long before the dinosaurs. Speaking of the dinosaurs, Dimetrodon is commonly misidentified as a dinosaur. And by commonly, I mean quite often. Let me explain why this is incorrect. Dimetrodon is actually a synapsid, a group of mammal-like reptiles that split off from the common answer to dinosaurs, pterosaurs, and crocodiles and birds during the late Carboniferous period, a long, long time ago before the dinosaurs, mammals, birds, and etc. To distinguish between the two groups, synapsids and diapsids, can be identified by the number of holes in their skull. Diapsids have two holes in their skulls, not counting the opening for the orbit of the eye and the nose. Synapsids only have one hole. And guess what? All mammals are synapsids. We descended from mammal-like reptiles like Dimetrodon, which means you are closer related to Dimetrodon than the dinosaurs are. You would be more correct to label Dimetrodon as a mammal than to label it as a dinosaur. So please, stop calling Dimetrodon a dinosaur. Anyways, Dimetrodon refers to a large genus. In the genus of Dimetrodon, there are about eight different species of varying shape and size discovered so far, ranging from the cat-sized Dimetrodon Teutonis, which looks like it would be an awesome pet, to the largest Dimetrodon, Angel Insis, which is about the size of a lion, to probably the most famous Dimetrodon, Dimetrodon Grandis, which was around the size of a panther. Dimetrodon was a very interesting and cool animal, and what makes it even cooler is the fact that we are distantly related to this guy. An unfathomable amount of generations back, your and my ancestors might have looked a little like this guy. Originally discovered in 1878, Dimetrodon meeting two measures of teeth was discovered by Edward Drinker Cope, a famous paleontologist with a sweet mustache and goatee. Dimetrodon was originally and inaccurately reconstructed as an extremely lizard-like reptile with sprawling outward legs and thick scaly skin, best depicted by one of Charles R. Knight's paintings. And yes, these depictions are very inaccurate, but I really don't blame them for getting it wrong. Dimetrodon was a really weird animal that has almost no real, closely related relatives to compare it to, besides modern mammals. But with more discoveries, some of which were discovered very recently, scientists are starting to know more about Dimetrodon, and the modern depiction of Dimetrodon is very different. First of all, let's get rid of one myth straight away. Dimetrodon didn't have scaly iguana or lizard-like skin. We now know, based on the skin impressions of a stem minosuchus, a related synapsid mammal-like reptile, Dimetrodon had softer, smoother, thinner, gland-filled elephant-like skin, and even may have had primitive fur or hair. Because Dimetrodon is an ancestor to mammals, it would only be natural for it to have mammalian qualities, especially skin and integument, skin covering. The oldest evidence of fur or hair in mammal-like reptiles is in Castoricana and Ama, small mammal-like reptiles that lived during the reign of the dinosaurs long after Dimetrodon was extinct. So it is unclear if fur or hair skin coverings existed further back in the mammalian evolutionary tree. Some scientists speculate that fur may have existed as far back in the mammal family tree as Dimetrodon but there is few evidence to support this claim. On the contrary, it would not surprise me if scientists found evidence of fur on earlier, more primitive mammal-like reptiles in the future. So sure, Dimetrodon and other mammal-like reptiles might have had fur. Scientists also know, based on the well-preserved belly skin impressions of Ophiocedonts, another type of related synapsids, Dimetrodon and other mammal-like reptiles possess tough, armored underbelly scales that existed on the underside and tail of synapsids. These pseudoscales were indeed homologous to reptilian scales and are not covered in keratin, unlike crocodilian scales which are covered in keratin. We know this from the early and small synapsid Archaeothyrus. As far as we know, these scales did not cover the whole body and probably were only regulated to the underbelly and tail. So all in all, paleontologists know for certain that the reptilian skin once thought to be accurate is now incorrect. Dimetrodon probably possessed a more mammalian skin covering, similar to that of an elephant's, and a scaly one on the underside and tail of the creature. Dimetrodon might have possessed primitive hair and or whiskers, but for now, we do not know. It may have looked like either one of Tropoteryx's depictions, the one on the left being covered in fur and whiskers, or the one on the right being covered in mostly thin, soft skin. Or maybe it was a combination of the two, thin skin with a short covering of fur. 
Also, Dimetrodon might have had a muzzle or a powerful nose, and due to Estiminosuchus possessing gland-filled skin, this would have helped the animals communicate via smell, like modern mammals. This is best illustrated by Tropoteric, whose depiction of Dimetrodon is amazingly cat-like, which I love and believe is accurate, within the knowledge of what we currently know about Dimetrodon. It is also important to note that Dimetrodon did not possess ears or ear holes, they possessed internal ears, but no external ears. External ears would evolve later in mammals. Now the next thing to talk about is Dimetrodon's posture. Early Dimetrodon depictions display Dimetrodon with, with a sprawling lizard-like posture. We also know this to be incorrect. We now know most of the time Dimetrodon possessed a splay-footed crocodilian gait, but Dimetrodon may have been a high walker an elevated upright gait, which is exhibited in modern crocodiles. The high walk may have only been rarely used in resting positions or while covering short distances, like modern crocodiles. Now lastly, before we talk about Dimetrodon's role in the environment and behavior, let's talk about Dimetrodon's most definable trait, its tail. Oh, okay, you got me. We're talking about the elongated spinal vertebra that everybody loves, nicknamed the spines. Yeah, the spines were what made Dimetrodon a big fan favorite in the paleontology community. Without them, Dimetrodon would have faded out of existence and, and be forgotten alongside stuff like these mammal-like reptiles. Do you remember these guys from your childhood? Bet you don't. The spines are just so peculiar and unlike anything you see today. But what were Dimetrodon spines used for, and what did they look like on the creature in real life? Well. New scientific evidence is starting to give us a greater look at what they look like and maybe what their function was. The Dimetrodon spines are elongated neural spines projecting from the vertebra, made of bone. And in contrary to some people on the YouTube comments sections may tell you, no, the spines were not used as wings. Soft tissue refers to any organic material apart from bone, such as muscle and skin. For a long time, it was believed that Dimetrodon spines were connected by a soft tissue sail made of skin membrane. The sail would be used for thermoregulation, releasing and trapping heat. This idea spawned from the bone being covered in small grooves that presumably supported the blood vessels that vascularized, which means brought blood to, the sail. Scientists think that the sail helped heat and cool down blood cells via an advanced system of blood vessels in the speculative connective soft tissue that connected the spines together. Scientists believe the sail was used for warming quickly in the morning and cooling down when the body temperature becomes high in the daytime. But a new scientific paper was released a few months ago on the study of Dimetrodon spines, and it has completely changed all we know about Dimetrodon and its spines. As it turns out, based on the 2015 findings, the soft tissue connecting the spines did not actually extend to the spinal tips. The recent evidence suggests that Dimetrodon did not have a sail at all that reached to the top of the spines. In reality, the soft tissue only reached about halfway, while the rest of the spines was just exposed bone, covered in non-connective skin and keratin, similar to deer antlers. Crazy, right? Meaning, Dimetrodon might have lacked the iconic fin on its back. Scientists say that the part of Dimetrodon's spines that was covered in soft tissue was not actually a thin layer of blood vessel filled skin, but majority fat and muscle, and that the spines might have been used as an energy storage device like a hump and similar to modern day mammals. Scientists also claim that Dimetrodon did possess soft tissue skin connecting the spines together like older depictions, but the skin did not reach the top of the spine. This skin was filled with blood vessels and most likely did aid in thermoregulation. So, with the recent evidence, Dimetrodon had a kind of half fin that was majority fat and muscle, and the rest of the spines were exposed, and not connected by tissue at all. The back of Dimetrodon would look like a hump. On top of this hump would be a mini sail. The rest of the spines were exposed vertebra. This hump would actually facilitate fast locomotion and be used as an energy storage device. The study also suggests that the spines could have been completely bare and not have had any connective soft tissue at all, similar to this or this. The exposed spines actually make more sense. The study shows that Dimetrodon spines broke at least five times throughout its life, leaving calluses of their regrowth and regeneration. If Dimetrodon spines were completely connected by soft tissue, and these spines were to break, as we know they often did, the animal would have an extremely hard time to repair bone and the tissue. 
but with the exposed spines, it would be much easier to repair if they were broken. With soft tissue connecting these spines, they would probably never heal. But because these spines are actually not covered in thick soft tissue, the spines could break even often without any serious injury. These spines would reheal and callus. With this new evidence, odds are the top half of the spines was actually primarily used as sexual display to attract mates and intimidate rivals. The sail could have been used for functional purposes as well, like storing fat and to some extent thermoregulation in the lower half of the spines that were covered in soft tissue. So, Dimetrodon looked less like this, and more like this, or this. And I find it very strange that in this situation, the spines ended up similar to modern day mammals, like rhinos, which possess elongated vertebra that is covered in fat and muscle, but may be interpreted by future paleontologists as a fin or sail connected by soft tissue, similar to what happened to Dimetrodon. First Spinosaurus, now Dimetrodon, what is it with spine-backed prehistoric animals and modern science changing them? Alright, now we get into what you really want to hear, Dimetrodon mating, because it had to happen somehow. So how did Dimetrodon mate? Well, we really don't know. Judging by the large neural spines, Dimetrodon could not mate on top of one another like most modern vertebrates. The most logical conclusion created by a scientist is best illustrated by the Tropoteryx displaying Dimetrodon mating back to back. This would allow the two Dimetrodon lovers to mate without damaging their spines. So what about Dimetrodon's role in the ecosystem? Well, we know that all species of Dimetrodon inhabited an environment similar to that of the modern day Everglades, which reminds me of another modern day synapsid similar in size and niche. The area in which Dimetrodon inhabited was a vast wetland dominated by ferns and aquatic plants. Maybe amphibians and small terrestrial tetrapods lived here. So the arid desert terrain depicted in Walking with Monsters is inaccurate. The large panther-sized species of Dimetrodon were the top predators like modern lions and other big cats. Dimetrodon ate a variety of organisms. We often see Dimetrodon eating large fish and sharks like the strange eel-like Xenacanthus. We also see Dimetrodon eating medium-sized aquatic amphibians. But that's not all. Dimetrodon did prey on larger game large herbivores such as the first land-living plant eaters like Edaphosaurus, in some places inhabited the same environment as Dimetrodon. Scientists have found evidence that Dimetrodon possessed the right tools to do the job as well. In 2014, a study was released about Dimetrodon's teeth. Dimetrodon had many different types of teeth, incisor-like teeth for gripping, stabbing canines, and recurved rear teeth for shearing through flesh and even hidden on the roof of the mouth to pin struggling prey. But under close inspection, the teeth differed between species. The small and primitive Dimetrodon, Dimetrodon millery, had teeth with straight cutting edges that were not suited for tearing flesh, meaning it preyed on small animals that were not too muscular. From a common small Dimetrodon ancestor, larger Dimetrodons evolved different teeth. The medium-sized Dimetrodon limbatus evolved small serrations that were more adapted for cutting flesh. And then from the medium-sized Dimetrodons to larger ones, we see the teeth of the large Dimetrodon grandis, which were even more specialized for cutting. The teeth of grandis were serrated. They had denticles, small tooth projections perfect for slicing and cutting bone. The serrated teeth are reminiscent to that of later theropod dinosaurs and sharks. Ironically, they look a lot like an old-timey bone saw. As we can see from the progression in more and more specialized and violent teeth as Dimetrodon grew larger and larger, scientists can speculate that a sort of evolutionary predator-prey arms race was, was being fought between Dimetrodon and their prey. It appears based on the teeth, small Dimetrodon, like Millery, preyed on small vertebrates. But as their prey got larger, medium-sized Dimetrodon had to grow larger as well, and had to evolve special serrated teeth for cutting through thicker flesh. The evidence clearly shows a predator-prey progression. Dimetrodon grew with its prey and adapted serrated teeth to tear through larger muscle and flesh. Due to Dimetrodon's habitat, Dimetrodon may have spent some time in the water of its swampy home. Like modern cougars in the Everglades, probably the closest living relative to share a similar environment to Dimetrodon, Dimetrodon would have had to traverse the wetlands to get around and forage for food. 
The genus of Dimetrodon lasted for an actually pretty substantial amount of time, surviving for about 20 million years. It was only when Dimetrodon's wetland environment started to dry out due to climate change did Dimetrodon go extinct, and opened the large predatory niche for newer and more evolved mammal-like reptiles, like the even more mammal-like therapists, which gave way to our ancestors in the terrifying saber-toothed Gorgonopsid. So all in all, Dimetrodon, cool animal. Dimetrodon basically was a prehistoric panther with spines, and now the famous spines have been recently changed. They are actually half soft tissue of muscle and fat, and half exposed spines. Dimetrodon has been featured in countless media depictions, just to name a few, Land Before Time where it is shown to be alive at the same time as the dinosaurs, and, and probably the most famous and in my opinion most seriously depicted in Walking with Monsters, and accurately living in an arid and dry habitat, something we know Dimetrodon did not inhabit at all. It inhabited a wetland, not a desert. Probably the most recent and most inaccurate is Dimetrodon's depiction in the Jurassic World game where you can quote unquote evolve a Dimetrodon to look like, as one of my subscribers best puts it, a unicorn wizard. Dimetrodon is depicted as a one-horned, purple people eater. Darn it, the real Dimetrodon lacked horns, and I highly doubt it was purple. Dimetrodon did have exposed spines, but it lacked a sail all the way up, and did not have spines on its tail. Again, sorry Jurassic World, but this is very inaccurate. Alright, that's all the time we have for today. I just want to say thank you so much to Tropoteryx who made me a ton of art for this uh, video. He's awesome. Once again, thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. And good news, I'm on Twitter now under the name Trey underscore explainer, so check me out. You can ask me questions and stay updated on my videos. I'm also on DeviantArt where I post strange and pseudoscientific art. Sorry that this video took so long to come out. I started school up again and I'm a little busier than normal. I'll still try my hardest to make sure I make at least one video a week. So once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on another scientific video.